Good day and welcome. My name is Amarenske and today I will be doing a video about books that left an impression on me but a Dutch edition because I read multiple languages and it is maybe interesting to show you a few of the books that left an impression on me plus most of them have been translated if you are interested in reading them but we'll start with one children's book that has not been translated as far as I know and that is An Island in Zee by Annika Thor this is a book about two Jewish girls, a twin, that flee to Norway in the Second World War so that they won't get killed by the Nazis and this is one of the first historical fictions I ever read in my life I think it was about 10 and it left an impression because it was such a clear view on what World War II was about and it was just something that I had never read before and the history education in World War II history was not yet really started in my school so this was the start of my uh, adventure adventure into that area then the second one is one of the first fantasies I ever read which is the Strom and the Koningin by Kai Meijer this one has been translated from German into Dutch but also into English I believe the English title is The Water Mirror it's a middle grade fantasy taking place in Venice um, with a lot of a little bit epic a fantasy story but for children of course because it's a middle grade and yet yeah, just a lot of magic happening and because it is one of the first fantasies I ever read I believe after I read several of the Harry Potter books but I'm not sure it left an impression on me because it in my opinion definitely is a lot better than Harry Potter it definitely has less plot holes and only consists of three books which is in English named the Dark Reflections Trilogy I don't know how it is called in Dutch and German but what I still do know is when I finished reading this one I run off uh, to the library to get the other two books so that I could read them after one another now we get one that was actually translated from English into Dutch, a book series called Op zoek naar Dolfijnen by Lucy Daniels, which is actually translated from English into Dutch. And the original series name was called uh, The Dolphin Diaries. At the time that I read these books, I really enjoyed them and my favorite animals were dolphins. So that might be an explanation about why I like them so much, but recently I got the final book in the series and I still really enjoyed it so I'm thinking about maybe rereading the series as to, uh, and look if I still enjoy it very much or as much as I did back then now we go into a philosophical work that I haven't actually read but I have seen the original adaptation into a uh, series which is The Wereld van Sophie by Josijn Gartner it's a philosophical story about a girl that tries to find her identity. It takes place in Norway and the original adaptation was also in Norwegian. We wa uh, watched it for Dutch class. It's, it goes uh, in depth about uh, philosophers and their views on the world. Also, the series we watched about this helped me actually understand the deeper philosophical layers in the Chronicles of Narnia, which was nice uh, again because I read uh, Chronicles of Narnia not that long ago but I really enjoyed them and even more because I have sort of a philosophical background to recognize the stuff in part because of this and in part because of other things that we had in school and now I have a couple of literary fictions this one is Buitenstaanders by Renate Dorostein. It has not been translated into English as far as I know, but it's a story about a woman 
who goes on holiday with her husband and their car breaks down at somewhere in the middle of nowhere and they discover a house where I believe four women live and the uh, story starts a bit around there and the title in English would be I think Outsiders but who are the outsiders in this book? You can view the title in a double way which is really interesting and has part of to do I think with the fact that it's literary fiction um, it's also meant as a feminist book and you can actually see that throughout the story I already read it several times and I think I might reread it again because this is a very enjoyable story but also a very strong one and I still have not fully decided uh, decided if the people in the house that have a little bit tendency to be crazy uh, are the outsiders or if the people with the broken car tires uh, are the outsiders. It's a really interesting discussion. And then we have The Engelenmaker with Stefan Breis. This one I read quite a while ago, several times, because it's one of my favorite books of all time. And it's a literary fiction that dives into science and the effect science can have on society or does have on society on several levels and it's just very interesting because it also contains biological knowledge that's actually true or was true for the era, uh, era where it was written in which is about 20 years ago and I had a discussion with my biology teacher once about that, uh, about what's written in this book and it was very interesting because he liked to talk about the deeper things uh, when we had classes on general science and nature so and one of the topics was uh, genetic mutation and why we die and cloning and stuff in this book is a discussion on cloning but how I want to tell you the English title would be the angel maker I might if I can find the proper link below I might link it down in in the description and otherwise I will just put in the book that I showed with a, a title translation uh, so you can check out for yourself if you want to read them then we have Probeer het Martyrarium by Eva Maria Staal. The main character has, funnily enough, the same, same name as the main character in this book. Um, the English one would be Try the Morgue, and I believe I found this book has a translation. It's not one of my all-time favorites, but it still left an impression because it is a discussion on what is good and what is evil or bad. Because the main character in this book uh, is a weapon dealer, also in war areas and also dealing with like terroristic organizations, but is it really bad or not? It's very deeply discussed and it was actually quite an interesting read. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend and I'm thinking about rereading this one too. Then we have two books left. I'll start off with with a schitterend gebrek by Arthur Japin. The translation in English, I believe, is called In Lucia's Eyes. This is Casanova's story, but from his alleged true love. I don't know if they were really true love, but it's uh, a person who was named in his memoirs. And it is the story from her eyes. Um, and it goes a little bit deeper like that because she was, uh, her face was destroyed by pox. So we have a character that needs to hide between veils so that she can have a decent life. Who becomes, uh, to say it bluntly, a whore. Not fully a whore, but it, it is well explained in the book. And it left an impression on me because 
for, it was one of the first historical uh, fiction, literary fiction books that I read for school. And I discovered that I really like this author. I have read more of his books uh, since. And I want to keep try reading them because he writes in a very approachable way. I like his writing style and it is a very thought provoking. And then we have one book left. It's one of the books in this bind up. It's a bind up of the Kroongetuigen and the Zonnewijzer. And the book I want to talk about a little bit is the Zonnewijzer, which is the sundial in English, which discusses uh, a little bit about what identity actually means and how you, who you are and what defi defines who you are and it goes into it almost creepily in a way that the main character try, uh, tries and almost succeeds in becoming her dead best friend because otherwise she cannot live in that uh, apartment she left to her but it has a reason and it has a part of a murder mystery a thing uh, theme to it because her best friend is dead and people think I believe it's suicide but it turns out to be that there is a little bit more to it and that has to do with the other book the Kroongetuige because apparently she was a, a very important witness or something to um to a murder I don't know because I haven't read that and I still want to um well this was the last book that left an impression on me. As you can see, a lot of them were either uh, middle grade or even moral literary fictions or philosophical because those thing books make me think and that is what leaves an impression on me. So I hope you like this video and I think I will upload a one from for English and German books tomorrow. So until then, an autoarcade!